Generative AI coming to Premiere Pro. Hi, Jason. How's it going? Hey, how are you? Very good. How's the show been? It's been busy. It's been wonderful. The reactions from the community have been excellent. I think this is the most electric and most fun NAB I've ever been to. So what is new for Premiere Pro? We have some AI features coming. Tell me about them. Yeah, well, we've been excelling and we've been a market leader in assistive AI technology for over a decade now. When you think of speech to text, when you think of automatic captioning, auto reframes, text-based editing, um, and our new um, category audio tagging powered by AI. But now we're going to get into generative AI in Premiere Pro. We're announcing that a new Firefly video model will be coming to market by the end of the year. We intend for that model to be commercially safe. We're taking our time and making sure that model is excellent and that it also is going to be able to use in a wide variety of use cases. We're pulling uh, from Adobe Stock, we're licensing content, we're sending video teams out to shoot to, to make stuff to train the content. And with generative video, with a generative video model for Firefly, we're going to be able to finally bring generative AI to Premiere Pro. But if we were going to bring Gen AI to Premiere Pro, we didn't want to do any novel workflows, any niche workflows. We're only interested in solving the day-to-day -day problems that video editors actually face. And as video editors, I've been cutting video for 20 years myself, we oftentimes run into these brick walls, these unmovable, unshakable problems where the only way around them is to get on the phone, call a producer, a director, a stakeholder. I'm going to miss a deadline because there's a bunch of C-stands in the corner of this footage, even though it was a really expensive shoot. And now we have to go to After Effects or Roto or Comp or do all this stuff. So we have three new workflows that we're really excited to talk about uh, that are going to be coming to Premiere Pro by the end of the year. They are Generative Object Removal and Addition, Generative Extend, and also Generative B-Roll or text to video, right? Um, with generative object removal and addition, you're gonna be able to mask and track an object or an area of your clip, and then you're gonna be able to remove it, and the new Firefly video model will be able to generate new pixels to fill in the background. You're gonna be able to remove unwanted pedestrians and, ba uh, and background extras from your shot, redirect viewer focus where you want them to look. If you don't have permission to use a specific brand or logo in your, in your video, you're gonna be able to quickly just remove that. You know, Object addition is gonna allow you to do even more because we're gonna be able to bring text prompts into Premiere Pro, right? Very similar to what you can do with generative, generative fill in Photoshop. You're gonna be able to, again, mask and track an area or object of the video, add a text prompt, and if you wanna make my black shirt a white shirt, if we want to add a painting onto this wall, if we wanna add, you know, textures and elements to our video that were never there when we were behind the camera, we'll be able to do that with Object Edition. But my absolute favorite feature that we announced yesterday at the show is Generative Extend, right? You have a cut, you have two pieces of video. You want to apply a transition, but there isn't enough coverage on either side of the shot to facilitate that transition. So you have that really awkward freeze frame as the cross is all <laughs> fades out, right? We've all been there. And additionally, let's say you have to swap out a take and now there's this really annoying one or two second gap in your timeline. You've already used all your good footage, you're at the end of the camera's take, and now we find ourselves in a situation where we're performing open heart surgery on our timelines, trying to figure out how to make that one moment work. Again, that's a time suck. That'll take hours from your day sometimes. So with Generative Extend, we're gonna be able to take a video clip and just simply extend and add photorealistic video frames that were never there, that were never captured with the new Firefly video model. It's gonna allow you to be able to cover that transition, cover that pacing issue. Also exploring generative B-roll, text-to-video technology that will allow users to add in new, new content that was never generated when they were on set, for previs, for a wide variety of use cases, but also with that, let's talk about our open approach to AI, right? And if you look at Adobe, we have a rich ecosystem of third-party plugins in Premiere Pro, where you can take thousands of plugins, effects, transitions that are made by other parties, other folks. Our customers are using other models uh, for, for specific niche use cases. And also, we anticipate a world where there could be hundreds, if not thousands, of Gen AI models in the coming years. Some will cover, again, like niche-specific use cases. Some will cover a wide variety of use cases. But customers have made it clear to us that they want the freedom of choice. They want to be able to choose what Gen AI model will work best with their footage, with their work, and to power certain Gen AI effects that we're building inside of Premiere Pro. So because of that, we're happy to announce yesterday at the show that we are in early explorations with our friends at OpenAI, Runway, and Pika Labs. Right? Oh my God, that's really cool. It's very cool. Um, on the creative production side, 
We're doing everything we can to make sure these content credentials are deeply embedded into the metadata. We're looking at more bleeding edge technologies that we'll be able to talk about uh, in the future when it comes to, to even more safety and transparency. But as it is now, you can't generate AI in Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Express, or the Firefly web app without these contract credentials being deeply embedded into the assets that we're generating, it's going to be the same thing with Premiere Pro. This is at the bedrock and the foundation of our Gen AI strategy. And again, no matter what model you use, we're going to inject those content credentials. That's great. And I think it's good that you take the responsibility for this. Um, can we jump into the timeline and see how we actually use this in Premiere? Let's jump into the timeline. So we're not ready to actually preview these workflows live in the app right now. We're in early explorations. Yesterday we announced a sneak preview, but we have a lot that we can talk about in Premiere today. Let's go over some new audio stuff. Show me. So at the Sundance Film Festival in January, we announced a whole suite of new audio workflows in Premiere Pro. And we're happy to announce that in May, they're going to be shipping to GA very, very early May, like the first week of May. So let me go ahead and pop over to my audio workspace here. Um, if you're a Premiere user, these workspaces are great for showing you, based on your workflow, uh, everything you need and nothing that you don't. So let's so hop over to my mixer over here. So we have this video over here, this um, nice little trailer. Okay, so what we did is we actually used AI to tag all of the audio in this project. So Premiere Pro now knows What's dialogue? What's music? What's sound effects? What's ambiance? Go ahead and click on this audio file right here, and we can tell that this is dialogue, you know? Let's make that a little bit larger. So what we can do is now we can use enhanced speech, loudness. The important thing about this is that as a video editor, instead of going to the effects library and just searching hundreds and hundreds of effects, as we use AI to tag audio, we're gonna automatically surface the most important features that are important for each category of audio. If I come back down here and I select this music track here, uh, yes, this is music. What I can do is I can turn on ducking, right? And let's go ahead and scroll down and make that a little bit larger right there. So with, you know, we all know ducking is, uh, you know, mixing music down so we can let the dialogue breathe and not over overpowering the dialogue. And there's ways you can do this. You can use an audio mixer uh, if you don't have access to an actual mixer for live playback. Um, or if you don't want to do that workflow, you can tediously make your own, you know, four keyframes for each duck. But we we've all been there. Keyframes, millions, it takes so much time. We've all been there. I mean, like, let, let me tell you, as we as we show this workflow, like the the kid, the, the college student, film school student in me is freaking out because I remember having to make four keyframes for each individual duck, right? So now all I have to do is turn on ducking. And because I clicked on this music track, you know, Premiere knows this is music. Here's what's important. Here's the workflow. I want to duck against dialogue. I can also choose to duck against sound effects, for instance. I'll go ahead and raise the sensitivity. I'll increase the duck amount. I'll decrease the fade duration. And I'm just going to go ahead and generate keyframes. Oh my god, that saves so much time. And the keyframes are just there. Uh, so is there a way that we can also then uh, tweak? Because I remember doing this, making all these keyframes, and I'm like, I actually made them a little bit too sharp. Can we like tweak them as well already in the docking, in the, in the docking part here, in the essential sounds? Absolutely. So th these are the, the, the ducks that we just made um, based off of these initial parameters. But let's say I want to decrease the sensitivity, decrease the duck amount, and increase the fade duration to get some different results, generate keyframes again, and you know, there we go. Yeah. That saves so much time. Completely different keyframes, yeah. It's, it's, it's an excellent workflow. It really speeds up your audio workflow, and we're really excited for users to use it. These features are gonna be shipping in GA, and again, in the first week of May, but there's some more goodies to show you, actually. Zoom this up, let's make this track a little bit larger. And zoom in right here, beautiful. So. Uh, you can see we have this um, sound effects badge right here, and we also have these new uh, redesigned FX badges that give you access to uh, the effects on each track. Click on this icon at the edge of my clip, adjust my fade-ins and fade-outs right here in the timeline without dragging and dropping any tools onto my sequence, move my mouse up and down to adjust the Bezier curve, and I can even cross over into the next clip to create a cross dissolve. Again, with the Bezier curve adjusting as I move my mouse up and down. You'll also notice we have completely new redesigned clip colors that make Premiere Pro a much more gorgeous experience for audio mixing. We have brand new audio waveform resizing, which gives you a much better look at your audio waveforms as you make your tracks taller and shorter. And 
it's just a much more, much more pleasant audio. I actually had the feeling that there was some slight color change. I thought it was a screen maybe, but it actually does look really good. Yeah, the new clip colors really hit. Um, the community's loving them. And those are some of the new um, AI powered and quality of life audio improvements that we'll be shipping to GA in very early May. Some other tiny quality of life improvements that we have for users. We um, now support um, Apple Log natively in the app. So for folks that are shooting ProRes Log on the iPhone 15 Pro, which I think is just like the coolest thing in the world, we will automatically tag the metadata in the ProRes log, and then we'll go ahead and automatically transform that to either Rec. 709 or HDR, or you can bypass it and throw on a LUT if you want to, whatever workflow you want to, but either way, we give video creators the tools when using with, working with advanced formats like ProRes Log to have a clean, easy, simple, wonderful experience color correcting that footage in Premiere Pro. This sounds like such a time saver. Like every new feature that you bring out, it feels like it just saves so much time. And that's actually the one thing that we don't really have. Jason, thank you so much for all this new information. This was Joost at the Adobe booth for DIYphotography.net and AB 2024. Make sure to stick around because we'll be covering more of the floor and see you in the next video.